government besides what the Department of Education of Higher Education and Training. It's important for us to make a follow-up of the important announcement which was made by the President and, and elaborate on it. Um, firstly, I would like to congratulate all our matriculates. We've seen with the IEP, we had uh, really the shining stars and I was saying, I don't know whether I was talking to somebody on social media, that it gives us a sense of comfort to know that uh, we have a bright future from a knowledge economy point of view if we have young people who complete their metric with a couple of distinctions. I always say many of us won't get gain entry in any universities because we didn't have nine distinctions, ten distinctions, eight distinctions, and that's what this kid has done. So we congratulate all of them. But of course we encourage all our young people who wrote to metric to really say again, they are so fortunate because they are doing at the time when uh, in 2009, government separated basic education, uh, the two, uh, uh, basic education and, uh, and, and introduced the Department of Higher Education and Training with a, 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 a post-school education and training system, which means there are more opportunities beyond just thinking about what was there in the past, that you finish metric, then you have to go to the university. <coughs> so even those who have not done well, it's important to encourage them to know that within a post-school education and training system, we have TVET colleges, which are really an entry to amazing, amazing skills and other opportunities. So we congratulate all of them and, and, and really say we'll be there for them. Uh, today marks approximately 20 days since President uh, Zuma made his historic announcements for free higher education and training for poor and working class families. Uh, if our dates are correct, this was done on the 16th of December, an important day, Reconciliation Day. 2017. The announcement by the president followed a, a period that was characterized by debates on what was to be done with the rising cost of higher education in South Africa. Maybe the cost of education in general worldwide, because it's not only even a South African phenomenon, it's a phenomenon, a reality uh, that is affecting many countries. This followed um, the hashtag Fees Must Fall campaign of 2015, which, um, which was, in, it was the initiative of organize and mobilize a student, uh, and it spread uh, across the whole system. I wouldn't even know how it started exactly, but all what I remember is that it was carried by as many students as possible. The policy decision communicated by the president to address funding challenges in higher education is proof that uh, education remains an apex priority of government's uh, pro-poor policies. Uh, I think many of you will remember one of the important announcements that were made by President Zuma as far back as 2009 really a lot was sent was said around education it brought us closer to what is in the freedom charter and in our constitution as well this is a central pillar in the fight to rid the country of the enduring and debilitating socio-economic leg legacy of apartheid colonialism and its resultant triple challenge of the discrimination based on race, gender, and class-based poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Uh, well, in the context of what the president said, it reminded all of us of, her, of what our first democratic president, Utada Nelson Mandela, 
said about the importance of education. I mean, we often make reference to this without reflecting deeply as to what are implications. Uh, President Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Uh, he went on to say, it is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine uh, or the owner, that a child of farm workers, laborers can become uh, the president of a great nation. It is what we make out of what we have, not what we are given. That separates one person from another. That distinguishes us uh, as leaders or whatever. And, I, you know, when you look at this quotation, I must say we are a living testimony of what Mandela said. The majority of us sitting in strategic position, be it in government or in the private sector, and I suppose I have friends even in the media, people will always share their stories of coming from nowhere. And so we are a living testimony that a good quality education and skills, they uplift you. And not only you, of course, they uplift your family. They uplift your village, your community. And at the end, they make the nation proud of having produced somebody. The weak economy, uh, falling tax revenue, growth and rising debt have put significant pressure on the public finances. These pressures have limited the space for any new policy commitments. Changes to the post-school education and training system will be undertaken in a fiscally sustainable manner. In practice, this means rolling out reforms at a measured pace and reprioritizing funding within existing budgets. Uh, the, this policy decision, which will be phased in over a five-year period, entails extending and strengthening government support for poor students to enter public universities uh, and technical and vocational education and training TVET colleges to include the children from working class families. It does this by lifting the threshold to qualify for, for financial assistance to students from South African households with a combined annual income of up to 350,000 per annum. Effectively, changing the de definition of the poor and working class to include families with household incomes of up to 350,000 per annum is what we refer to as phasing in a new system. Also, we are disrupting the vicious cycle, as we have said, of the legacy of the past, which uh, sustained inequalities, basing it on race, gender, and class. We are also extending the provision of free higher education and training to the children of the bottom 90% of South African households, provided that they meet the academic admission criteria and requirements of the TVET colleges and universities, and that they have applied for and been offered a place to study at the institution, noting that there are a defined number of spaces at each institution determined by the institution's approved enrollment plan. I think, colleagues, it is important to emphasize what I've just said because we've tried to say it, and I hope I won't have to repeat it again, that the policy was not meant to disrupt the normal functioning 
uh, and autonomy of our institutions of higher learning, meaning universities and TVET colleges. Uh, we will be disrupting the system if we did away with what is typical features of any academic institution that you have to apply, you have to be you have to meet a criteria in terms of what you want to do from their point of view in terms of the marks that they want you to have and then of course they have to have available space in that institution those are standards all over the world and our universities are rated like all other universities our tvet colleges are like all other tvet colleges worldwide where people have to follow procedures so continuing along the same lines i have to explain that this entailed providing full bursaries for tuition and study materials to qualifying poor and working class south african students at both public tivet colleges and universities and subsidizing accommodation and transport kept at specific levels for those who qualify, starting with the first time entry students in 2018 and phased in over a period of five years. Uh, we talk about subsidizing accommodation and transportation. We felt it's important to talk, uh, to clarify that because normally how government works when they offer any form of assistance they put a ceiling. We wouldn't expect, for instance, a student to insist on going and get accommodation only in a five-star hotel. Our ceiling might be far below that, but it will be decent and secure enough for anyone to sit and be able to study and access the library. So hence, we, we, we thought it's important to talk about this subsidy. Providing for NESFAS packages to already allocated to returning existing university students in 2018, provided they meet the academic progression requirements to be converted from loans into full bursaries. So those who are doing second year and many other years, uh, they won't be held back because they, they are owing, they cannot pay. Those are the ones who are saying we'll make sure that we uh, enable their uh, applications and make sure they, they, they register for the following years and these are converted. I think it's important those who are familiar with the challenges students were failing, sometimes a person will qualify for NESFAS but wouldn't be registered because the university will say you are still owing. NESFAS has already received in access of 300,000 applications for first year students for the 2018 academic year at universities and TVET colleges. A government would like to assure South Africans that all applicants in possession of a firm offer from a university or TVET college will be assessed for funding using the revised criteria. <clears throat> the second point which is important to emphasize is that government will like to assure young people and all South Africans that all those in possession of a firm offer from a university or TVET college but who did not apply for NESFAS funding will be identified through our systems. Remember there are people who might have said, oh, I won't qualify, uh, my family earns far above 60,000, but today we are saying 350,000 is the limit. So if for some reasons a person has already applied, is accepted, and all of a sudden he fits in, the system will pick them up. Uh, the third assurance which I want to give is that students who may not have applied at, an, at any of our institutions or NESFAS and are looking for space in the post-school system will be assisted through the central applications clearing house. 
um, you will all remember that following the incidents at the University of Johannesburg a few years ago, when a parent died trying to assist parents, the department came up with the idea of central applications. But now it's live uh, from the 6th of each month of January to the live for the next two or three months to really assist those. Uh, I also know personally a few who says, hey, I didn't apply, you know, but now I've passed. There are people who are like that. So through that, through that system, which is managed by the department, we encourage people not to stress their families and their parents, but to lodge their applications. Remember, I've said we have universities and TVET colleges countrywide. Students who are in possession of firm offers from universities or TVET colleges, but did not apply, uh, that, might, that sounds like a reputation. Uh, the phasing in of this policy will ensure the sustainability of government financial resources while simultaneously ensuring that improved access to post-school education and training for students is guaranteed. This approach allows government to gradually phase in fully subsidized free higher education for eligible poor and working class students year on year in a fiscally sustainable manner. In line with government's commitment to opening up access to opportunities for students in the post-school education and training system, the department remains committed to the egalitarian principles of equality, fairness, justice, and diversity. We believe that this will go a long way in the fight against the perennial challenge of skills deficit that has been developed uh, be developed, developed uh.